Okay, for us, our very last section, talking about numerical integration, kind of going back in time to our Calculus 1 days, or first semester calculus. Here's what numerical integration is all about. What it allows you to do is approximate integrals, definite integrals, that you couldn't otherwise do, that we don't have a formula for, that we're, man, we, I don't know how to do this one, or something we haven't covered. Because there are going to be some integrals that we have not covered. Even though we've done all our techniques integration, there's something you're like, oh, I don't know, is it partial fraction? No. Is it trig? No. I don't know. Well, we can approximate those definite integrals with these two processes. One's called the trapezoidal rule, and one is called Simpson's rule. So we're going to talk about trapezoidal rule first, then Simpson's rule. They're very similar in what you do. Um, what this is doing, again, it's giving you an approximation of a definite integral without having to even do the integral. You with me? Okay, so, um, like I said, I, I think I just mentioned this to you guys, but put yourself back into your first semester calculus days when we haven't done a lot of integrals, okay? So, the ones that we're going to do on, on the board, uh, they would be something you'd learn in calculus too. Well, we've, we've already learned them, uh, but back then, these integrals would have not <coughs> been really possible for us because we would not have learned them yet. You with me? Okay, so with that in mind, let me introduce to you the trapezoidal rule. So, the trapezoidal rule says this, if you want to approximate a definite integral, remember that definite integrals have bounds of integration, they go from like A to B, they go somewhere. Of any function that you want, we can approximate it, hence our squiggly equals here, we can, we can approximate it by doing this, and it's really interesting, here's how it works, it says, and I'll define these in just a minute, but they should look familiar if you took calculus one. This looks familiar. Delta x, you guys have seen delta x before, haven't you? Yeah. We'll talk about that, I'll define it in a second if you don't remember what it is. You take delta x, you divide it by two, and you multiply it by this sum, by f of x sub zero, plus two times f of x sub one, plus two times f of x sub two, Plus, and you keep all those twos until you get down to 2 times f of x of n minus 1 plus f of x of n, no 2. That's the trapezoidal rule. Now, I'm going to define a couple of these things for you. Firstly, what delta x is. If you don't remember, it's okay. Delta x is b minus a, where am I, where do I get my b minus a from, do you know? Yeah, it's just here, b minus a, it's just your, your interval. So b minus a divided by n, n is going to be given to you. So n is going to be some finite number, uh, because we're approximated right now. Now listen, we can't let n go to infinity, because if we did, well, we wouldn't have an approximation anymore, and this is going to, we wouldn't have a finite number of terms to add up, it wouldn't be an approximation, we can't actually do that, we couldn't do this forever. Uh, the idea of doing this forever is, the actual integrals we've had. So if we could do the integral, well then we're left with a finite number of terms to approximate our value. And then x sub i, which means that x sub 0, x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4, x sub n minus 1, x sub n, uh, is given by this. You start with a, again a is just right here, and you add to it your index times delta x. That might look a little confusing, you got to trust me on this, this is not that hard to do. And I'm going to prove that to you right now with an example. So um, write down the formula. I'm going to show you how to do it. Just make sure you write it down correctly, okay? There's no 2 in front of this. There's a 2 in front of every other term that you have until you get to the very, very last one. And then there's not a 2 there. Quick head up, you're, you're okay with that so far. Okay. So let's do our example. So what we're going to do is we're going to approximate 1 to 2, 1 over x, dx. And what we want to do is approximate this with n equals 10. If n equals 10, what that's going to mean for us is that we're going to get 11 terms here. We have an x sub 0 through x sub 10. We're going to end on the x sub 10 term. Does that make sense to you? So we're going to get 11 terms. Stop it. n equals 10. Now, if you look at that, many of you are going to think, well, why don't we just do the integral? What's the integral of 1 over x? 
Would you know that in a, a late transcendentals class like we have for Calculus 1? Because in Calculus 1, we don't cover that. So that's why I said put yourself back into a Calculus 1, first semester Calculus class. At, at our college, we have what's called late transcendentals. Some people have early where they do this in Calculus 1. We don't, so we do it later. Um, so for us, this would have been impossible back in Calculus 1. So all we would have done is try to approximate it. Here's how we're going to approximate it. The first thing we do, we figure out delta x, of course, that's going to be important for us. So, uh, to figure out delta x, delta x is b minus a over n. All those things are going to be given to you if you have a definite integral. What's our b? 2. Two. Minus? One. Over? Ten. Perfect. That's going to be 1 10. Okay. Well, we're close to Okay, so putting this in our formula. Now we got to figure out our x sub 0, our x sub 1, our x sub 2, our x sub 3, our x sub 4, blah, 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 blah. In fact, you can think of this as, because we're going to be using calculators, uh, you can think about this as 0 0.1 if you want to. Might make things a little bit easier for you if you want. So, it looks kind of weird, like how am I going to figure, it's not that hard, here's what it says. If I want x sub 0, x sub 0 says start at a, what's a? 1, 1. Add 0 dx's. So we're just going to have 1. Does that make sense? x sub, t uh, sorry, x sub 1. one. I missed 1. x sub 1 says this. Start at a, what's, what's a again? 1. one. one. And add 1, delta, 1 times delta x. So it would be 1 plus 0 0.1, or just 1.1. One x sub 2 it says start at a, it's 1, plus 2 times delta x. Well, that would be 1 plus 0 0.2, 1 0.2. Can you tell me what the next one's going to be? 1.3. What's the next one? And then 1.5, then 1.6, then 1.7, then 1.8, then 1.9. At the very end, we're going to get to x sub 9, that's going to be 1.9. And then x sub 10 gives you 2. I want to show hands if you're okay with, with where those are coming from. Can, can you follow that? It should be a little bit easier because it's back to calculus this one stuff. It's just plugging numbers in. It just says, hey, start here, start whatever that is, and just add delta x. So for x sub 0, you add none of them. So it's just 1. And then uh, add this. 1.1, add it again, 1.2, add it again, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1 and then well, 1.10, uh, 2. Yeah, so we get 2. Now, what the trapezoidal rule says is after you've, all, after you've done all that, the integral can be approximated by doing this. You take delta x, what's our delta x? So we have delta x over 2. And then you're going to do this. You're going to have f of x sub 0. f of what? <coughs> Plus, what's the next thing I'm going to write? Two. Now our 2 start. 2 times f of what? 1.1. Yeah. Plus 2 times 1.2 plus 2 times f of 1.3 plus, so we're going to do this all the way down until we get to 2 times f of 1.9 and then we're going to have, do we have a 2 on the very last term? No. No, it's just f of 2. Okay, I want to do like a, a 20 second recap just to make sure that you get this. So. The idea behind these numerical integrations is sometimes we can't integrate, or sometimes we don't know how to integrate it. And this would be one of those cases uh, where, at the time, we would not have known how to do this. Now, I'm giving you a very simple example, okay, just so it makes our math easy so you get the idea. You could do this with some pretty hardcore integrals uh, that you don't know how to integrate. If it's a definite integral, do you understand that if it's not a definite integral, this, this doesn't work because I'm plugging numbers in, all right? So what we say is, all right, uh, where's your integral starting? whatever, where's it stopping, whatever. You can find delta x with that, provided you're given the number of iterations in your, in your, uh, your rule. So in this case, we have 
n equals 10, that's 11 terms that we're going to be going through. So it says, okay, cool. Well, if that's my delta x, then I start with my a, and I just add my delta x for every new term. So I add it, then add it, then add it, then add it, then add it, until I get up in my last one. Plug in the formula, we have delta x over 2, no problem. f of x sub 0, f of x sub 1, so 1, and then 1.1, 1.2, .1, all the way to you get to the very end. Notice the only two, two terms that don't have 2's are the first one and the last one. You follow? Mm -hmm. Now, what's nice about this, do you have a function that you can plug these things into? Yes. Yeah, it's right there. It's just 1 over x. So we're going to do this. We're going to start by taking our delta x. It's 0 0.1 divided by 2. And then we're going to have f of 1. So that's 1 over 1 plus 2 times f of 2. So check it out. It's going to be 2 times 1 over 1.1 1 .1 plus 2 times 1 over 1.2 plus 2 times 1 over 1.3 plus we're going to do this for a while for a finite number of terms and we're going to end off with 2 times 1 over 1.9 plus 1 over 2. I want you to see if you can you can go through that in your mind that that actually makes sense to you. Show of hands if that does make sense to you. Okay, so here's what you're going to do on your calculators. What you're going to do is you're going to figure out what all these things are. I, I'm not writing all because it just takes too long. So, but I'm hoping that I've made this clear on, on what this, this is. Do you guys see what, what it is? We start off with just a function evaluated at whatever our a is, just 1. And then we add to it 2 times f of 1.1, 1 .1, 2 times f of 1.2, 2 times f of what, whatever, our, our x sub 3, our x sub 4, x sub 5, all the way up till we get to our x sub n minus 1. Look at that. x sub n minus 1 is 9. Some of you guys on your test did x sub n plus 1 for this one. You were counting further than you, you should have been counting before, not after. So x sub n minus 1 gives us our 9, and then our last one, whatever it is, and 10 in this case. No 2 here. We plug them into our function. That's why we have our 1 over this, 1 over this, 1 over x sub 3, 1 over x sub 10, and then we just figure out uh, decimal equivalent. So in our case, on your calculator, you get 1 plus 2 over this, plus 2 over this, plus 2 over that, blah, 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 blah. and then multiply that by 120. Now, as you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to actually, I, I did this on purpose. I did the integral because we can actually do it. I wanted to see how close this actually is. So if we were to really do the integral, so keep on working on this. Uh, some of you guys really go through this, okay? I want, I want an actual answer. So, but if we were to do the integral with what we know now, we know the integral of 1 over x is ln x, and we would evaluate that from 1 to 2. That's ln of 2 minus ln of 1. Well, ln of 1 is 0, so we get ln of 2. And ln of 2 is about equal to, uh, someone who's not working on this, can you tell me what ln of 2 is about equal to? 0 0.69314. 0 0.69314. Say it again. 69314. Okay. Yeah, about the, it keeps on going because it's... It, it, well, it's an irrational number. It goes on forever without uh, ever repeating. Have you got this one? Yeah. What'd you get? Uh, 0.69377. Yeah, okay. Is it exactly the same? No, but it's close. Is it close? Mm -hmm. Tenths, hundredths, that, it's the same to the thousandths. It's off by a little over six ten thousandths. So, with, if you, but here's the point. This was quicker because we know how to do it, right? If this was an integral that we didn't know how to do, this would be the best way because you don't know how to do it. So you go, okay, well, cool. Let's evaluate this approximately. Let's use our trapezoidal rule, and then we get something that's relatively close. Now, question, how do you make this better? Plus C. More terms. Not plus C because it's a definite integral. <laughs> how do you make it better? More ends. Do that to like a hundred. It's really close. Annoying. Very annoying. But really close. Because what's happening is you're taking our interval and you're making it really, really, really little. Uh, it's the same idea with doing Raman sums with more n, with n equals larger numbers. You're, you're making smaller rectangles. Smaller rectangles, well, hey, 
If you've got smaller rectangles, that means you're, you're missing less and less area when you add up those rectangles. If you remember back to your, your Ramon sums that you did in calculus one. Is that making sense to you? So the bigger that is, the more close this is going to be. I just want to do this one to, to show you, hey, you know what? You can actually approximate and get it pretty darn close. Show of hands if I explain that well enough for you. Okay, um, this is it for trapezoidal rule. That's how it works. I'm going to give you a Simpsons rule. Show you how Simpson's rule differs. Here's how Simpson's rule works. Simpson's rule is going to look really, really similar. Here's the only difference. Instead of taking delta x divided by 2, you're going to take delta x, you're going to divide by 3. Then what you do. Yeah, I know, right? It's cool. It's awesome. I like threes too. Then what you do is you take and you start with the same f of x sub 0, but this becomes a 4, that stays a 2. And you're going to go 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, and end with a 4. Right there. And then that last one doesn't get anything. Now, this will only work if n is even, n's got to be even. So you can't do this if n is 5. You could do it if n is 6, or if n is 8, or 2, or like what even numbers are. You do it evens, but other than that, this, this won't work for you. Let me make sure I wrote it down right too. I did it from memory, but uh, yeah, I think I got it. You guys want to do an example here real quick? Yes, please. Okay. Does this make sense to you that we're going to alternate fours and twos? Just you don't end with a two, you end with a four. Uh, that, that's going to happen if you have an even. Okay, so it's going to be nothing, then four, two, four, two, four, two, four, two, four, nothing. I think for your very last term, it will happen if n is even. <clears throat> so let me change this just a little bit. about 1 over square root x plus 1 from 0 <coughs> to 2 with n equals 7. Is that okay? No. no. Why not? It has to be oh, even. Seven, Fine, we sticklers. <laughs> 6. n equals 6. Go through the same way that you would normally do the trapezoidal rule, only now we're just going to plug it into a different formula. The delta x is calculated the same way. Uh, the x sub i's are calculated the same way. And it just has to be satisfying that n is even, okay? So, uh, delta x, what's delta x going to be? 2 minus 1 third. Yep, going to be 1 That's right. I'd probably leave that as a fraction 1 third because I don't want, I do not. Do not want you to uh, approximate and just do 0 0.3 or 0.33 because you're going to be losing something there. And you're essentially going to be losing it every time you multiply, every time you have a term because of that distributive, distributive property, uh, the approximation will be way off. So leave this as a fraction unless you can have a finite decimal. Are you listening to me right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so leave it as a fraction. Okay, well, cool. Um, now, let's do our x's. So we want x sub 0, we want x sub 1. x sub 2, and so on. Uh, what's x sub 0 going to be, do you know? What's x sub 0? Say it louder, what would you say? Zero. zero. Yeah, you start with a. Zero. Zero, no problem. Okay, well now, if I have x sub 0 is 0, what's x sub 1? Do you know that one? Yeah, it's going to be 1 third. Do you guys see the, the point in doing this? Uh, well, maybe you don't see the point in actually doing this. We're trying to approximate intervals, integrals uh, without actually doing them. We start with that number. You just keep on adding this, your delta x for every term. That's what this says. It says start with your a. Do you understand our a is 0 right now? You get it? Yeah. Start with a. Just add delta x. That's it. Just add it every single time. So what's 0 plus 
one third. Okay, we do know how to do fractions. So, what's one third plus one third? Two thirds. Ah, now we're on a roll. X sub three. What's uh, two thirds plus one third? Three thirds. One. What's x sub four? Four thirds. Four thirds. What's x sub five? Five thirds. And what's x sub six? Two. Six thirds. Two. Yay. Yay. So, fans, feel okay with that one? So, we, we, I have I have all the all the terms in this particular one, just so we can go through it and get some time. So, our integral can be approximated by doing this. We start with delta x. How much is delta x? One third. One third. We divide it by what, people? Three. Very good. And then we have this whole sum. We have, how does it start? One. F Let's do the f s. Zero. F of zero. Very good. F of zero. Then we add, oh, what's the next thing? Four. 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 Starts with a four. Four times f of what? One. Plus what? Two. Two. Because you go, here's how it works. Starts with nothing, then it goes four, then it goes two, f of two thirds, then it goes to what? Four. Mm -hmm. F of one. Then it goes back to two, f of four thirds, then it goes back to four f of 5 thirds, and then it does what, please? f of? 2 thirds. Yeah. But notice there's nothing here. So see how it's going to work? It's going to always start with a 4, well, start with nothing and with nothing. Start with 4 and with a 4. And we're going to have one extra 4. So it's going to pair up, bam, bam, but then the extra 4. It's not going to go back to, the, it's not going to get there if we use our even ends. Should fans feel okay with, with this one? Are you sure? Okay. And you can see, if I went to uh, n equals 8, what's going to happen is I'm going to have another 2 and another 4. You see it? If I went to 10, I'd have another 2 and another 4. It's always going to end with that 4 and then the then that last term without anything in front of it. So, what do we do with all these numbers? What do we get to do with them? Okay. Plug them into what? The function. Yep, yeah, they're right there. So, this is going to be approximately 1 ninth. Okay. One over square root zero plus one plus four over square root of one third plus one plus two over square root of two thirds plus one plus four over square root of one plus one plus two over square root four thirds plus one plus four over square root 5 thirds plus 1 plus nothing, 1, well not nothing, 1, over square root of 2 plus 1. And if you do that and add them all up and then multiply by 1 ninth, then we get an approximation. What I'd like to know is, a show of hands if you understand where all these things are coming from. Show of hands if you do. You guys on the right, are you guys okay with this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is why I had you bring your calculator, take your calculator out because there's a we're not going to be able to do this in our heads very easily. So we're approximating here. It's okay to get our decimals. So we got uh, 1, then you add that, take square root, divide 4 by it, and then so on and so forth, and so on and so forth, and so on and so forth. Uh, now, I've already done it. You guys can go ahead and see if you can check my work. Uh, but just for the sake of time, it's going to take a little while, right? <laughs> so here's what it is. Uh, what it ends up giving you is approximately 1.46421. Is what that is. Show hands feel okay with the idea. Now, what I want to do, I want you guys to do the integral because we do know how to do this one. We were kind of pretend that we did. I want you to do that integral over here and just see what, how good that approximation is. All right. So go for it.
I'd like you to check my work to make sure that we all got the same thing. Did you get about that? I should just get exactly that. You should know. You got the 2 square root of x plus 1. Did you plug back in the x before you started evaluating? Perfect. That's fantastic. So we got 2 root 3 minus 2. Um, how much is 2 times the square root of 3 minus 2? 1.46410132. Can you say it one more time? 1.46410162. Okay, that's good enough. That's our, our decimal place. Is it exactly the same? Is it close? Yeah. It's really stinking close. Look at that. This is a 1.4641. This is 1.4642. It's off by a little over one ten thousandth after only six. N equals six, so six iterations. That's that's not too bad. So that's, that's pretty darn close for approximating something if we didn't know how to do it. So that's how the trapezoidal rule works. That's how Simpson's rule works. Have I explained it well enough for you guys to understand it? Yes. yes. We're done. Oh. oh wait, no, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs>